Thank you for taking the time to listen to our weekly service. This is a listener-supported ministry, and we ask that you pray and see what God would have you give. Now let's get to our sermon for today. Okay, uh, this morning we're going to talk about the virgin birth concerning Christmas and all. In Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, which is our text for this morning, it says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. The thing that's very important is what is called the incarnation of Jesus Christ. And we're going to talk about that this morning, the concept of it. I'm going to look back in 1 John in the New Testament 4, 9. It says, "This in this was manifest the love of God towards us. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. I can't tell you how important that is. And I'm hoping we're going to discuss that today. I'm going to discuss two things um, part of the time. It's called the natures. Christ had two natures. He had the human nature and he had a divine nature. So first of all, we're going to look at the human nature. Jesus could not come into the world with sin. Have you ever thought about that before? I want to tell you, I hadn't even thought about it. And uh, I mean, it just never occurred to me. And and then I got to studying about it more and more. I almost didn't do a sermon on it because I didn't think I'd, I'd really do a, a in-depth study enough. But it all came together and I was really blessed by it. If Joseph had sex with Mary and Christ was born, there would be a problem. I don't know if you ever thought about this before. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, 21. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. I'm going to explain some of that to you with some other verses this morning. Because of Adam's sin, sin is carried on to all of us that are born into this world. I'm going to give you the verse for that. So if Jesus came into the world by Joseph, he would have came in and would be born with a sin nature. Something to think about. So God obviously knowing all that had to prepare another way and that's through the Holy Spirit and uh, and uh, in Romans chapter 5 verse 12 listen what it says here now wherefore as one man's sin entered into the world whose that was Adam okay and death by sin so is death passed upon all men for all have sinned Every one of us, the moment they slap us and we start crying, we have a sin nature. And that sin nature, hey, I I always get a kick out of saying this to people. Have you ever taught a child to be bad? No, it's because they have a sin nature. We always have to correct them and teach them good stuff and all. You don't do nothing to them, they'll constantly get worse and worse and, and, and do things bad. That's the sin nature that we have. Okay, well, Christ couldn't come into the world with that. That would disqualify him to go to the cross. How many sins does it take to go to hell? Anybody can answer that? One. Not two, not ten, not fifteen. One. Now, look at the divine nature a moment. So by the divine nature, Jesus is born into this world by the Holy Spirit. See, the Father's side. The Mary's side gave him the human nature side. The Holy Spirit gave him the divine nature side. Isn't that interesting the way that works? Now remember, she's a virgin. That's what made this possible. Only because of her virgincy. Uh, So it's just pretty neat. So the divine nature helped him become a candidate to go to the cross. Isn't that interesting? I tell you, it just blew me away that this is in such depth, uh, as I've been telling you the last couple of weeks about this, that how God, I mean, you talk about a holy God that had to make sure he entered the world as a human without a sin nature, 
then he was still tempted, though, like I quoted last week, in all points as we were, but yet without sin. So he experiences everything, but doesn't yield to the temptation. So he never sinned for 33 years. Now, let's go back to the Old Testament a minute. In the Old Testament, they had sacrifices, okay? And you had to take certain a dove or a, a lamb or what, depending on what, what you're sinning on. And you had to take it to take care of it. But there's a problem. Whether you were rich, the poor people never had the best of anything. I mean, really good animals. Uh, the rich may have had some really good ones. But let's face it, even a, 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 a one that didn't have much, of anything, or couldn't even afford to do a lamb, and maybe had to bring a, a dove. The key was they had to be to br- bring the best of what they had, which made it means that it wasn't sinless, because it wasn't the best. It wasn't the ultimate animal. There was no such thing. So, what was the sacrifice doing? It wasn't forgiving sin. It was covering it. So basically, it was a bandage until Jesus Christ entered the world. Because when he did die on the cross and paid the debt, he paid, and all the sins were forgiven from all the way back to Adam and Eve. All that was forgiven, the present's forgiven, and all the way in the future is forgiven. Now, sometimes that's hard for us to comprehend, but it doesn't happen until we get saved and accept him as Savior. And Do we still sin? Yes. But the forgiveness of the sin to get us into heaven is already forgiven. Now, like I tried to teach you in the past, that what happens while we're on earth and we sin, we lose fellowship with God. We get further away from Him. We don't lose our salvation, but we lose that fellowship. And the next thing you know, God's putting, letting obstacles come into our lives to draw us back. Uh, our lives get miserable. They, I always tell people the most miserable person in the world is not an unsafe person. It's a Christian out of fellowship with God. That's the most miserable person in the world because they're fighting God. They may not think of it that way, but that's what they do. So Christ ends up having that divine nature. So now he's man, pure man, and he's pure God. Isn't that interesting? And to see how it came about, to me, is really neat. The way God had figured all this out and made this the way it was. And again, I can't repeat this enough. How can a book, somebody, over the, all these books, through all those centuries, put all this together in such detail? There is no anybody that smart. And in the end, the text also tells us, this main text, is that his name was Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God is with us. The Magi, or we call them the the wise men, uh, proved the divine relationship behind the birth of the Messiah. They are called, back then they called them magicians and all, but they studied science. They were really good at science, the star studying and all. And if you think about this, they had to also know stuff in the Old Testament. Why? Because they knew Christ was being born. They got that from there. There was no other place at all. Then, they, because they studied the stars, now the star. Remember we talked about that briefly because you had that uh, planet thing and all. The star led them. Led them. The star says, the scripture says, it went before them. It also says it came and stood above Jesus. For all of them to follow, and they said they were following the star. Well, how do you follow a star that's way up in the sky? They didn't have the instruments we have today. They didn't have a GPS or any of that stuff. You know, that wasn't a natural phenom- phenomena. It was something supernatural. And I honestly believe that star came down and was leading them. Not, I don't know if it was directly in front of them or up in the sky leading in a direction and all that. I don't know how it all worked. But I do believe the scripture. And the fact that it said it went before, after they left Herod, it said it went before them. All of a sudden, there it was again, before them, leading them. And then when they got to Christ, it said it was still up above him. So I'm not sure how all that worked, but I do believe what the scripture says. So the fact that they, now they traveled a far distance. They traveled either from Persia or Babylon. 
Uh, they travel a lot. I, I got to wondering, and I don't know if this is true, that, you know, uh, most of the time they're on camels or walking and all, and they're going across desert and all. It may have taken almost a year for them to get where they came from. I don't know. But uh, the fact that they showed up a year later is kind of interesting. So they traveled from a far country and they followed that star. So it was unusual to... Uh, something drew their attention. And it had to have been the scripture and the star. So anyhow, the wise men ends up getting there. And what did they do? They bowed down and worshipped the baby. Now what did they know that no one else seems to know? Here's something else they do. They give him gifts. They gave him gold. Gold was only given, if you look at tradition backwards, were given to kings. Anytime someone visited a king, if you go back in scripture, you'll see whether it was a good king, bad king, a Babylon king, whatever, they would present them gold. And here they're presenting the Christ child gold. Frankincense which was smoke or incense that, that goes up, which symbolizes deity. And then they gave him myrrh. And myrrh was used to embalm uh, bodies and all back then. So they believed that that was a symbolization that he was going to go to the cross and die for the sins and all. So it's amazing what they know. Now what I heard a good sermon one time strictly on the wise men, who they were, what they were. Apparently they were geniuses of their days. They were really intelligent people and all. And they didn't just study science and all, but apparently they studied the scripture too. And all. So that's really kind of interesting. So the incarnation is a miracle, if you really think about it. The way God put all this together and all. The dictionary defines it. An effect or extraordinary event in the physical world that surpasses all human, known human and, or natural powers and is ascribed to supernatural causes. Uh, the B meaning was a work of God, a wonder, or a marvel. The virgin uh, birth was in part basically a miracle, the way it all worked out. And the way God just blessed, number one, Mary, because she was a virgin. And all. Hey, I got to thinking, remember the, the Jewish women were always looking that they may have the, and it never occurred to them about the virgency. You know, they were married, they were hoping to have a child. And it's interesting, God had to bring it into a virgin, had to enter. That's the only way He could have did it and make Him available to go to the cross and all. And then have Joseph not be the man. And I think that's interesting. Uh, now, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was his spouse to Joseph. Now, a spouse meant they were engaged, okay? But back then, engagement was an actual contract. So in order to get out of it, it was a strong contract. It was like having to get a divorce just to get out of the contract. Now, they're not married. It was just an engagement and all. Uh, so I want you to understand how strong that was. So he was uh, espoused to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Though even, you know, I wonder to, even today how many people still do not believe the virgency of Mary. Uh, and don't believe. I, I, so, some of these weird shows on TV, I, I watch once in a while and I don't, I, I got to the point where I don't watch it anymore. And they talk about uh, weird things about Mary. It just blows me away. So Jesus is born of a woman and made him fully man, a human being. And being born of the Spirit made him fully God. Even after Joseph saw Mary was with child, uh, we have a problem with the Holy Spirit. Well, not a problem, but the Holy Spirit ends up visiting him. Now here's what happened. Matthew chapter 1 verse 20. But while he thought on these things, so what happens is, he knows she's pregnant. He knows he didn't do it. So he figured somebody else did it. Okay? And he's sitting there, and he, apparently he was apparently in love with her. Because it says that he wanted to put her away privately. In other words, technically, back in those days, 
a virgin that got pregnant and all, they would put her to death for for that, a Jew in a Jewish thing. So he wanted to protect her, and he was thinking about how to do this to where no one would know, and she would, no one would look down on her. So while he's doing that, it says here, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Joseph didn't know that until the angel told him. And when he did that, he got up, he went ahead and married her, and all. But the neatest thing is the next thing. They didn't have sex until after Christ was born, the scripture teaches us. Now, isn't that interesting? So, can you imagine now, the the implication could be if they had sex, even though it was of the Holy Ghost, but it didn't, it had to stay pure until after he was born. And then she went on to have other children, and all. But even, and it's neat that the scripture teaches us that, and all. So he explains, the angel explains, and he believes and marries her and and all that, and uh, which is another part, uh, to me, of the miracle of how God planned this whole thing out. In Acts chapter 4, verse 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven which is given among men whereby we must be saved. It took, because of what took place at Bethlehem and how it took place, And what took place at the cross, we have entrance to heaven. And a lot took place is what I'm trying to stress this morning, as I did the last couple weeks. A lot took place for us to have salvation. We ought to be extremely thankful this Christmas of what Christ and God and the Holy Spirit did for us to have a way to get to heaven. It wasn't simply, oh, I, I, I forgive you, come on up. God had to have, that had to be paid. He's too righteous. What I'm going to do is, it doesn't have nothing to do with the virgin birth, but it, to me it fit just with the sermon here. I'm going to read you a song. Okay. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like a billow, sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan shall buffet, through trials shall come, let his blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. O sin, my sin, O the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin, not in part but whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. O oh, my soul. And the Lord hastes the day when the faith shall be sighed, and the cloud be rolled back as a scroll. The trumpet shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it will be well with my soul. I think that's the way we should feel this Christmas and be so thankful to God for what He's done for us that we have a way to get to heaven. I hope that this Christmas will be a blessed one for each of us and everyone. I hope this Christmas will be different than any Christmas because of what we see in Scripture and how in detail he did this for Christ to be born and the way he was born and all, just so he could go to the cross and die for us. Merry Christmas to you all. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this stuff that we can read in the Word of God. Excite us, Father. Put joy in our hearts that we can be so thankful for what you've done and how you accomplished it and how you are a God of your word and that you went through much detail to make sure that we have access to heaven. I just pray, Father, that you would help that those that are unsaved that hears this message may come to know thee as Savior. And I pray that those of us that are saved will really feel the joy of this Christmas and what took place 
on December 25th. I pray, Father, help us to rejoice. In Jesus' name, amen. We pray that we have been a blessing to you. For further assistance, call us at 864-270-1472 anytime. Send email to info at stlmm.org or visit our website at www.stlmm.org. Like any ministry, it costs money to operate. Please consider supporting this ministry as God leads you with your prayers and your financial gifts by going to www.stlmm.org and clicking on Donations.